What's going on everyone, Juicebags here, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over 10 things that every player should know about Dungeon Defenders Awaken. Some of these you might already know, some of them you might not, however, these 10 things are something that is not completely obvious that every single player should get to know in detail. Let's get started. First things off, you can rename your heroes. So if you decided in a fit of rage as you're creating a new hero that Butt Sauce is a wonderful name and later have regrets, never fear as you can just go into your hero deck and rename your hero. Lots of players out there are hoarding gold. They're saving up as much gold as they can and that is just never a bad idea. However, just don't forget to upgrade. Using some of that gold to upgrade your gear can give you just substantially different results. By all means, throw some upgrades on your stuff. Someone that's just jumping in might not know, but the two pets you want to focus on early game is the Mista Mine Rock Pet, which will drop from the Ancient Mines, Wave 15 Survival, and then the Propeller Cat, which will drop from the Alchemical Labs, Wave 15 Survival. Do these on the highest difficulty you can, however, if you can't get it done on Insane, you can still get pretty nice versions of these two pets, with a little luck, in hard mode. The Mistamine Rock Pet is going to be best in slot as a stat stick, really, for any builder out there, and the Propeller Cat is the standard go-to for any DPS hero, and will pretty much straight up double your damage output. Now when you are doing your upgrades, make sure you're upgrading locked stats. Now we went through a how to upgrade weapons video just a few days ago, and we went through like the rate of fire, the additional projectiles, these are locked stats that you will want to upgrade in intervals. However, on your armor, all the way at the bottom, you've got this locked stat that doesn't have a name on it. That value is armor. Straight up armor rating. So always make sure you're hitting this locked stat as, of course, what's the old saying? Dead heroes do no damage, and you can, with proper upgrades, get your damage reduction over 100%. That means you can run around, never fear about any sort of Dark Elf Warriors or anyone else that's getting up in your business with that 100% reduction in damage. Now this of course is just insane mode values that's not going to hold up in Nightmare, so as we jump up, that number is going to drop considerably. Remember that control and scroll wheel on your mouse allows you to resize traps and auras. Now with auras, it straight up resizes the aura. If you've got two that you'd like to fit in, but you can't quite get them in there, use that control scroll wheel to size down your auras. Where this is really awesome with traps is it actually sizes down the trigger range, but not the detonation range. Meaning that on a very tight corridor, you can size your traps way down and fit multiple traps in this area where they're all going to detonate at the same time when enemies run through. Now we all know to keep our hero deck full, but I think a lot of folks don't know exactly why. And here is, you're gaining experience per hero that's in the deck. So for example, if we do that insane summit campaign mode and we get say 800,000 experience, this is not 800,000 per hero, this is 200,000 per hero for four heroes in your deck. Now, this doesn't mean if you remove heroes, you get more experience. The experience is earned for the hero that's there. So if you rolled into that exact same match and you only had one hero in your deck, you would only get 200,000 total experience. Now, although you always want to keep your deck full, there is one exception, and that is target farming. You can target farm specific weapons. Say you're looking for a Huntress weapon and you're just not having the luck getting that paintball gun or whatever it is you're looking for. If you remove all other heroes from your deck but your Huntress, all you're going to have drop is Huntress weapons. 
Now, if you go with two out of four or one out of four or three out of four, remember you will be taking an XP penalty. So if you have four Huntresses, throw all four in your deck and let them get some experience. However, this is crucial to target farming. This is what's going to allow you to get a high-end version of the exact weapons you want. Now remember the agility stat, which is also our run speed and jump height. This stat is capped. It's a hard cap at 100. Anything over 100 points in agility is just not going to do anything for you, so don't waste any points there. Get to 100 and call it good. You are at the fastest that hero can run. Now a lot of folks are confused about the the builder bonus. Now what this means is if you build a defense say on a squire and then you play that round actively on that squire, any defense that that squire built is going to get a 30% damage bonus to the damage output of that squire's individual defenses. Now this does not mean by switching to another character you're being penalized it's a builder bonus for being active on that hero. Now, obviously, early in game, when we've all got a bunch of hybrids, that is very, very powerful. However, once you do get a DPS hero that's completely squared away, you're going to find that the amount of pure pain that an actual DPS hero can bring is substantially more than that 30% builder bonus, so it should be a no-brainer kind of swapping off to your DPS hero. Then always remember to use the report button. Uh, if you hit your escape menu, you see a bug report there. Now this is not just for bugs, this is for feedback as well. So if you see something that doesn't feel quite right, make sure you get it reported because if we as players don't communicate to Chromatic, they are not going to know what they need to look at. So make sure you're using that report button, get your feedback out there. This is 100% the best way to do it. Uh, you can, of course, post on Discord and post on forums, but remember, this is the area that they've provided for us, so everything that's posted here will get a developer's eye looking at it. So that will do it for now. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to click that like button and please subscribe to the channel. Remember, just like Dungeon Defenders 2, I will provide information about every single aspect of the game throughout early access and into launch for Dungeon Defenders Awakened. So thank you once again, and I will see you next time around. Take it easy.